There was a time when voters didn't consider religion a major factor in presidential races. In today's political landscape, though, candidates come from diverse religious backgrounds, and voters want to know if a candidate's faith will affect how he or she would lead the country. Do Americans have a right to know what a candidate believes about God and faith? And should we ask them about religion? Author Stephen Mansfield says we must ask. In his new book, Ask the Question, Why We Must Demand Religious Clarity from Our Presidential Candidates, the best-selling author shows how candidates' personal views on faith and religion, as well as their feelings about the country's religious heritage, reveal a great deal about how they would govern if elected. Stephen Mansfield's with us. Stephen, you, it's a good book. I, I must say it's an, it's an easy read. It's a fun read, but thank you for writing it. Um, thank you. Let me ask you, uh, let, let's get into the one that you pointed out so clearly in your book. Uh, uh, John Kennedy was faced with a claim that he was going to be the vassal of, uh, of the papacy, that the pope would rule America because a Catholic uh, was going to be made president of this country. And so he went to Houston and spoke to the Houston Baptist Association and apparently dispelled the, the uh, question. Uh, Mitt Romney tried the same thing about Mormonism and failed. What, what, what was the difference? Well, the difference, Pat, was that uh, in John Kennedy's day, the question was, would the Vatican rule? As you say, the Vatican at that time was an independent state. So in, se in a sense, it was a foreign government. So people weren't so concerned about what Catholics believed. They were concerned about the authority of the Vatican. However, when it comes to Mitt Romney now, people weren't concerned about a Mormon takeover of America. Uh, there are only about 14 million Mormons in the world. Uh, but they were concerned about what specifically Mitt Romney believed. And that really is the issue today. People aren't concerned about candidates' religious denominations or religions institutionally taking over government, but they do want to know the unique beliefs of each candidate and how that might undergird or affect policy once they get in office. Well, you know, uh, the truth is uh, we, we craft laws on the basis of our belief of what's right and wrong uh, and our belief of uh, what the human nature is you know, the, the Russian state said all the rights that a person had came from the state. We believe that all the rights that a person uh, has come from God. is a, a radically different point of view. Uh, that's exactly correct. Uh, even, for example, in this election, Bernie Sanders, uh, who has described himself as secular at times, uh, speaks about what's fair, what's right, what's just. These are largely religious questions, religious issues. And so even when someone says, I'm secular, I, I don't come from a theological or religious base, well, they really do. It may not be a traditionally religious base, but it is a religion in some form. And the voters need to know it. Uh, and the candidate needs to draw a line from what he or she believes to their policies and therefore help us understand what they'll do in office. We, as I often say, religion should not be an unelected co-president mm. uh, in anyone's administration. We should process it in advance. Well, you think of the uh, role of marriage, the definition of what constitutes marriage, uh, who's in charge of children, uh, the education of the children, uh, the role of uh, the church uh, in, in a society, how much taxes should be levied or none at all, whether there should be freedom, et cetera. There's a whole panoply of things, and a person's point of view should have something to do with that. But we don't want to talk about it, do we? We, we don't have any, any desire to hear about that. Well, as I'm talking about this book around the country, uh, I have a, a number of friends who are consider themselves atheists or secular, and they say, Stephen, why, why are you insisting that the candidates, uh, you know, come up with a religious view uh, and, and kind of forcing it on them? And, and that's, of course, not what I'm doing. The reality is that the candidates themselves are putting their religion in play in some form. But often it's a very light treatment, you know, God bless America after a speech or maybe some video of them going to church. Uh, we need to drill down. We need to go further. We need to understand exactly what they believe and how it's going to affect them in office. We, we've had some major reversals uh, of people's public policy positions, even in the Oval Office. And when they were explained later, they were explained as a result of that person's religious view. Well, we need to know about this during the campaign. Uh, 
the Bush people made a big deal about a just war. They got Catholic theologians from the Middle Ages to talk about a just war. Would you talk about that? Well, exactly. There's a famous just war theory that arises from St. Augustine, uh, and it basically gives four principles or four standards by which we uh, gauge or, or measure a, a just war. And uh, this was brought out during, of course, our uh, wars in the Middle East. And uh, what's interesting, of course, is, you know, probably understandably, none of this was processed <laughs> during the campaigns, and few Americans knew what it was. So while we might commend some of the folks in the Bush administration for having the knowledge of this standard and, and attempting to apply a, a just war standard, the fact is that most Christians didn't know what this was, much less non-Christians. Uh, and so again, it would have been great to have this discussion earlier and, and, and have a deeper theological discussion about these matters again during the campaign. Uh, you pointed out, I've been to that uh, presidential press dinner. You made it sound like the most glamorous uh, event on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you said, nevertheless, there weren't any religion writers in the, in the crowd. Talk, talk about not that. Not a one. Not a <laughs> one. I, some of these religion writers are my buddies, and they're just mystified. But yeah, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of journalists in D.C. at the, at the White House uh, Correspondents' Dinner, not one who specializes in religion, and that's part of the problem. We, we're not uh, actually, we're, the, the journalists, religious journalists, or journalists who write about religion and politics, are, are declining in number dramatically, and that's, that's an unfortunate trend. Don't the uh, mainstream media, or media in general, sort of think that a religion, that uh, deeply held religion, is something out of the cane breaks, out of the yahoos, out of the swamps, and uh, that the sophisticated people don't really hold to those views? They do hold those views, and it just doesn't hold water, particularly look at this presidential race. Every single Republican running claims to be a Christian. Half are evangelicals. And on the left side of the aisle, you have Hillary Clinton, who, though coming from a different theological base than the Republicans, uh, is nevertheless a woman of, of a deep commitment to her uh, social gospel Methodism. And so, so everyone running almost, except maybe Bernie Sanders, is outspokenly religious and has no problem with the blend of religion and politics. So it's not rubes who are forcing this discussion on us. Yeah. It's the candidates, left, right, and center. Well, you pointed to Jimmy Carter. I remember he was the first. He talked about being born again, and everybody made a big deal about being born again. Chuck Colson wrote a book called Born Again. It was a national bestseller. Um, uh, it, it was that what he brought this into the national focus, or has it always been there? Religion was part of our national debate in our early history. Uh, all of our presidents made strong theological statements. Many times they voluntarily assured their orthodoxy. If they weren't orthodoxy, it sure was an issue in the campaign, Jefferson, Lincoln, for example. And then in the 1900s, uh, we began to move away from that a little bit. But you're absolutely right. Jimmy Carter, with his uh, open acknowledgement of being born again, and then, of course, the rise of the religious right that you know so well, yeah. with the March for Jesus and so on, began to force theological and religious issues on candidates because we just wanted to know what they believed. It caught some of them off guard. Uh, Dad Bush, George H.W. Bush, wasn't really ready to be too articulate about his faith at that time, but his son certainly learned that language. And mm -hmm. George W. Bush did far better. But, but you're right. It's, it's not new, but it has sort of come back into currency in recent decades. Yeah. Well, Steve, it's a great book you wrote. It's called Ask the Question, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, you'll find it very, very fascinating. And uh, he even has a, uh, 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 well, it, it, it's an audit of the religious beliefs of America that's in one of these chapters. Uh, you'll find it very interesting. It's it a good book. Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, Wonderful. Stephen Mansfield, thanks for being with us. God bless you. Great to see you, Pat. Thank you. All right.